Hello and welcome to a new video about automation. This time we are going to talk about two properties which process control system usually have eh? or need to have, even need to have. So uh, those two properties, they are simply a must have eh? because otherwise it would maybe be not that easy. Yeah, or not that successful. Yeah. So let's let's say I will just write it down and I explain something to you. So a, a very important thing is is time deterministic. Time deterministic means that I can ensure that the task is executed every 200 milliseconds, every 5 seconds or whatever priority I give to this task. Okay? This does not necessarily mean a task is, is taking that long. Yeah? So there might, for instance, be uh, a task of temperature measurement. Uh, the temperature measurement needs only to be done every, I don't know, five minutes maybe. Yeah? If it's the outside temperature, or cooling water temperature or something like this, then every five minutes should be sufficient for sure. Uh, however, it does not mean that it takes five minutes to determine the temperature of the water. It just it takes milliseconds, microseconds maybe. Yeah, to ask a sensor, but I will only do it triggered. Yeah? Other tasks might be more important and I need to run them every half second. Other tasks might be more important and I need to run them every, every, I don't know, 100 milliseconds. Okay, so I separate my ta my, my complete software into separate tasks. Yeah? Separate into tasks. And each of these tasks is executed by the processor. Yeah? So the good thing is then if one of these tasks is blocking, yeah, there is also a time, a stall time, yeah, and if the stall time is reached and the task is not finished, pack, the task will be cut yeah, and the next task will be executed. So this means one task after the other is executed and one task which is not running perfect yeah, because there is a programming error inside or there is a, a there's simply a problem. Yeah? A sensor cannot be reached or something like this. Yeah? Communication issue. It takes simply too long. It will be stopped. Yeah? This needs to be done by the process control system. Yeah? This means if only one task is not operatable, all other tasks are working well. I can still operate my process. This is the important thing. Yeah? If just imagine there is a temperature, the outside temperature, uh, yeah, it's usually just for information. And this temperature measurement is blocking my whole process. This cannot be. Yeah? This time deterministic behavior, this separation in task, this from the software perspective, separating all those things, yeah? This needs to be part of a process control system. We need to prohibit, prohibit that one, one task is blocking all the others. This is, the, this is what is behind the time deterministic behavior. We want to have it time deterministic. If I press a button within a certain time, it shall happen. Whatever I want to do with this. Time deterministic behavior. One important 
thing of a process control system. A second important thing of the process control system is one database. Usually we do have different parts. A process control system consists of different parts. We have talked about this. Yeah? So there is an there is an measurement system. There's visualization. There's an alarm system. There's a recording system. There's a logging system. So there are different different systems which need to be done. Yeah? And the measurement system should operating system, of course. Yeah? Operating system. Yeah? These are the tasks a process control system simply has to fulfill. If I have a measurement, I have to measure it. I want to show it, I want to record it. If the measurement is beyond a certain threshold, I want to issue an alarm, I want to lock this alarm, yeah? I want to operate maybe something which is based on this measurement. So these things do have, these are the tasks, these are summarizing the task of my process control system. Yeah? So my, and these are sub-elements also. Yeah? And these sub-elements, Let's say there's a temperature measurement. Let's again do a temperature measurement. So this is a measurement system. There's a temperature measurement. The same temperature measurement needs to be visualized. The same temperature measurement needs to be recorded. The same temperature measurement needs to be within the alarm system. The same temperature measurement needs to be a logging in the logging system. So this one temperature measurement is this one object of temperature measurement, this process object temperature measurement is only there once. Yeah? This is one, what one database means. Yeah? There is one central process object and all the other systems are accessing this process process object the same process object if I add a new up to now I have no visualization let's say I want to add visualization I do not have to copy this process object and do it a second time I add the visualization and say visualize this object this is already there okay this is also a typical design of a, a process control system that we mod, make a model of our process with process objects and all the other part of our uh, process control system are referring to this one object in this one database. Okay, And every task running there is time deterministic. These are the two things which really, I mean, imagine there is a visualization showing another object than the, than, than the alarm system. Then you get an alarm from an object you cannot see. No, 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 no. This, this simply needs to be fulfilled from, it's more software specific. Yeah? It's more from a logical point of view, software specific. Yeah? However, these are two Two things a, a, a process control system simply needs to, to fulfill. Okay. Time deterministic and one database. Uh, well, we talk now a lot of stuff about process control systems. 
We talked about this hierarchical view and so on. We talked about the history. We talked about which components. We talked about now which properties we need to have. Yeah? And next time or next few videos, we are going to make an example. Uh, since I'm from the field of hydropower, I will have an example of a hydropower plant. Hydropower plant has the benefit that we can clearly see those hierarchical structure. Uh, and it's not that complicated. Uh, still complicated enough, but it's not, it's not like an, an, an thermal power plant yeah, where a lot of processes are running yeah, and a lot of measurement points. In a, in a hydropower plant do you have, I think it's a good starting point. Yeah? It's complicated but not compli too complicated. As an example, yeah? we can see everything we talked about. So this then will be in the next few videos. Yeah? Next video we're going to start about, start with the lowest level, with the field level yeah? or unit control level. No? This then will be in the next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.